please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the, to flag the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight, first we have oath of office, swearing in of elected officials. Number one is the town of Hampton elected officials. <laughs> All right, so I need to be sworn in before I can swear anyone else in. <laughs> I'll let you say it. You already know what it is. <laughs> I do solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire and will support the constitutions thereof, so help me God. I do solemnly and sincerely swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me as town clerk according to the best of my abilities, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, so help me God. Good job, Rusty. <laughs> it's a tough job, but somebody's going to do it, right? <laughs> Okay, that's Thank it. you. Yep. Yeah. Right. Right. He likes that type of duty. Regina <laughs> Barnes, selectman. Okay. 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 Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, Regina M. Barnes. I, Regina M. Barnes. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States. America, the United States of America, and the state of New Hampshire, and the state of New Hampshire, and will support the constitutions thereof, and will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Regina M. Barnes, I, Regina M. Barnes, do solemnly and sincerely, do solemnly and sincerely, swear and affirm, swear and affirm, that I will faithfully and impartially, that I will faithfully and impartially, discharge and perform, discharge and perform, <coughs> all the duties incumbent upon me, all the duties incumbent upon me, as selectman, as selectman, according to the best of my abilities, according to the best of my abilities, agreeably to the rules and regulations, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. And Regina, join us. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is Arlene here? Bob Casaza, moderator. <laughs> you almost know it by heart, too, right? I don't. <laughs> I, Robert Casaza, I, Robert Casaza, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance that I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America, to the United States of America, and the state of New Hampshire, and the state of New Hampshire, and will support the constitutions thereof, and will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Robert Casaza, I, Robert Casaza, do solemnly and sincerely, do solemnly and sincerely, swear and affirm, swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially, that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform, discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me, all the duties incumbent upon me as moderator, as moderator, according to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities, agreeably to the rules and regulations, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. William Hartley, trustee of the trust funds. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a trustee of the trust as funds. A trustee of trust funds. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my ability. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeable to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. I just need your signature. <laughs>
That's it. Congratulations. Chris Hendry, library trustee. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Raise your right hand, please, and repeat after me. I'm oh, sorry. I, Chris Hendry. I, Chris Hendry. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. Constitutions of thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Chris Hendry. I, Chris Hendry. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and confirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. Faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent <coughs> upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a library trustee. As a library trustee. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my ability. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Sure, absolutely. Easier. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're Congratulations. Welcome. Thanks. All right, planning board, Fran McMahon, Keith Lassard, I don't see him. And Mark Olson, you're it. I'm it. I'll fly in solo tonight. I, Fran McMahon, I, Fran McMahon, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will bear faith and true allegiance, that I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America, to the United States of America, and the state of New Hampshire, and the state of New Hampshire, and will support the constitutions thereof, and will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Francis McMahon, I, Francis McMahon. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a member of the planning board. As a member of the planning board. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my ability. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. <laughs> To the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Susan Irwin, cemetery trustee. Ready? Ready? <laughs> okay, raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, Susan Irwin, I, Susan Irwin, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will bear faith and true allegiance, and I will bear faith and true allegiance to the United States of America, to the United States of America, and the state of New Hampshire, and the state of New Hampshire, and will support the constitutions thereof, and will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Susan Irwin, I, Susan Irwin, do solemnly and sincerely, do solemnly and sincerely, swear and affirm, swear and affirm, that I will faithfully and impartially, and I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform, discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me as cemetery trustee, as cemetery trustee, according to the best of my abilities, according to the best of my abilities, agreeably to the rules and regulations, agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, Mark, you want to come up? <laughs> Sorry, Jane. No, that's okay. That's all right. Let me find you here. Okay. You ready? Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, Mark Olson. I, Mark Olson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. Will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. 
support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Mark Olson. I, Mark Olson. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a member of the planning board. As a member of the planning board. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution, of this constitution, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire, and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So, uh, Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. There and there, please. Did I mess up your uh, <coughs> Not at all. sequencing? Not at all. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, budget committee. Brian Lapham, Timothy Jones. Danielle Augustine and Steve Henderson. <coughs> 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 Raise your right hand and repeat after me. State your name. Steve Henderson. Danielle Augustine. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America, to the United States of America, and the State of New Hampshire, the State of New Hampshire, who will support the constitutions thereof, who will support the constitution thereof. So help me God. So I state your name. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. Faithfully and impartially. Discharge or perform. Discharge or perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a member of the budget committee. As a member of the budget committee. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So, so help me God. Congratulations. 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 Signatures on my own. Sorry, I only have one hand on me. So I have one hand on Danielle, you did? I didn't. Oh. <laughs> I usually bring more. It just completely slipped my mind tonight. And then this one as well. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Nope. Um, we talked. Um, someone talked to Shirley about it. Okay. We'll, I'll, we'll take care of it. Right. Is it still the per who we talk, you and I talked about? You know? uh, yeah. Because we have to do the paperwork ahead right. of time. Okay. Yeah, I'll get in touch with him tomorrow. Okay. Do we have Brian Provencial? No. Okay. So we will move on to Hampton School District. <clears throat> Put on my school district clerk hat. <laughs> and Ginny Bridal Russell. Yes. <laughs> school board. Okay. Yeah. Are, we, are we ready? I think so. Okay. Thank you, Melanie. I think so. I, Ginny Bridal, raise your right hand, please. <laughs> yes, please. I, Ginny Bridal Russell. I, Ginny Bridal Russell. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions and, thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Ginny Bridal Russell. I, Ginny Bridal Russell. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will fa faithfully and impartially discharge and perform discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me all the duties incumbent upon me as a member of the school board as a member of the school board according to the best of my abilities according to the best of my abilities agreeably to the rules and regulations agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution of this constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire and the laws of the state of New Hampshire so help me God so help me God congratulations thanks Jane Congratulations. And I think that's everybody. Job, well, everybody you. that we have tonight, okay. anyway. <laughs> Thanks. Thank Next, you. we move on to the reorganization of the Board of Selectmen. Number one, we have election of chairman and vice chairman. 
to nominate Rusty as chairman. Second. All those in favor? I'll nominate Jim Waddell as vice chair. Second. All those in favor? I, I, I abstain, so I just voted to myself. thing we have is we have the appointment of member and alternate to the budget committee. I'll nominate Regina Barnes. Second. You okay with that? I'm okay with that. Alrighty. All those in favor? Unanimous. Unanimous. As an alternate. I'll nominate Rusty. Or oh, yeah, Rusty. All oh. second. <laughs> second. I know. All those in favor? Appointments to the member and the, the alternate of the planning board. I'll nominate Jim Waddell. Second. All those in favor? As the alternate? Yeah. Rick? Second. I'll second that. Oh, second. All those in favor? There we go. Those are the ones we have to do today. So, the next part we have is two public hearings. RSA 41. 14-A, a second hearing for the acquisition of stormwater drainage and turnaround easements at 88 Lafayette Road. At 88 Levitt Road. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lafayette Road. Is there anybody from the audience that would like to speak? Is there anybody from the audience that would like to speak? I'll bring it back to the board. Is there anybody from the board that would like to speak? And we'll... It goes to a third hearing, correct? Uh, yes, sir, it does. All right. So the next one is RSA 4114-A, a second hearing for the acquisition of a drainage easement at 167 North Shore Road. Is there anybody from the audience that would like to speak? Is there anybody from the audience that would like to speak? I'll bring it back to the board. Is there anybody that wants to speak on this? And we'll send that to its third hearing. So public hearings are now closed at... Uh, 1918. 1918. <laughs> okay, we now have public comment period. Is there anybody from the... Mr. Preston. Thank you, Mr. Varado. Congratulations on your championship. Thank you. Hey, uh, I had a quick community announcement. For anybody that doesn't know, uh, when it kind of boys basketball, varsity team, is playing at UNH tomorrow night at 5.30. So anybody can get up to UNH at 5.30, go cheer them on. Winter Cunningham's going to be playing uh, Manchester Central. Ooh. So it's, it's exciting for the kids. There's five seniors there, and it uh, be great to get people up there to support them. That's great. I just want to speak briefly about some of the election results. And at the deliberative session on January 30th, I guaranteed the sky would not fall, regardless of the outcomes of Articles 37 and 38. Article 37 was to accept the streets A through Q. They received 2,931 yes votes, a little less than 3,000. Article 38, to discontinue, received 2,058. So it was you know, about 900 votes difference. I'd just like to say thank you to all those who supported my efforts. I'd also like to request th this board to request the casino properties to meet with the Hampton Beach Area Commission as soon as possible because I believe time is of the essence considering the HBAC is paying the engineering firm of VHB to update the transportation section of the beach master plan as we speak. So I'd really appreciate it if this board would consider sending a letter to the, you know, to the partners of casino properties and say, please come meet, because that was the whole intent 
of not, you know, passing this article from my efforts. And that, that's pretty much it. The only thing else I got to say is go win a cut and it'd be nice to see some of the faces up there tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie. Is there anybody else from the public who would like to speak? Mr. Latham. Brian Lapham, 27 High Street. I just wanted to welcome you aboard and um, let you know that we do have a meeting tomorrow night, though we're just going to pretty much set up as you are, so whether you come or not, but you can meet the gang okay. at the Budget Committee. But welcome aboard and thank you. Thank you, Brian. Anybody else from the public that would like to speak? Seeing not, seeing that, I'll bring it back to the board for announcement and community calendar. Mr. Bean. Thank you. Uh, great election results, uh, great turnout. Uh, I just want to read a, uh, uh, a letter that I sent to um, Mike Edgar, and congratulations to Michael on his, uh, his victory. Uh, to, in order for him to be seated immediately, it required uh, candidates not to participate in any recount effort. Uh, from Bill, Phil Bean to the uh, Secretary of State, William Gardner, the following are the results of the special election. Phil Bean, 1134. Ken Shefford, 1074. Mike Edgar, the uh, victor at 1467. I waive any rights to a recount of the subject election results. Mike came down the office, picked this up in hand. And I want to uh, commend him and uh, and Mr. Shefford for uh, the professionalism they uh, they uh, exhibited during that election, and in particular uh, the Democratic Party leader, Chris Munns. I thought he did an excellent job. I thought he, I know he did an excellent job and an outstanding job. Congratulations to the uh, Democratic Party and to their candidate on his election. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Selectman Griffin. Um, I uh, was contacted by. Dave Harnett and um, Kara, uh, whose dog was rescued by the fire department, Clarence, and they wanted to give a donation to the fire department, and uh, they've got this envelope for Chris, I mean for uh, Chief Ayotte, and um, it's to go to the firefighter that has health issues. Very good, sir. Thank you. Selectman Barnes. Do you have anything for community calendar or announcements? I don't have any announcements. I just want to say I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Jim? Uh, yes, I'd, I'd like to congratulate everybody who won in the election. I'd like to thank everybody who ran in the election. Thank all the voters for getting out and voting. I think it was uh, there were a lot on the uh, articles and everything, and people paid attention. They get out and they voted, and it was really good. So I, I think it was a great election, and I think it's good omen for what's to come. And I'll, I'll too, just briefly, that it was a good election. The town clerk and all of the, the uh, voter uh, voting workers did a excellent job. Our town uh, moderator did an excellent job. Uh, and then people got out and spoke. We had 37, almost 3,800 people that, that voted. And uh, that's better than a usual year that we just have um, a town election. So I appreciate all the people that did get out and vote. Okay, next is the consent agenda. We have one, a raffle permit for the professional firefighters of Hampton, and we have a one-day entertainment license for a wedding band at 433 Exeter Road. I'll move that. Motion, no, Second. Seconded by Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, appoint, uh, we have appointments. And we have our chief assessor, Mr. Tinker. Here this evening to begin the process of the 2015 abatements. Um, I presented 12 of those for tonight's meeting. Um, just to let you know, we had a total of 24 applications this year. Um, so this is half of those that we are processing. Um, the total amount of refund for 11 of those, actually 10 that were approved, or at least recommended for approval, and the amount of $8,365.32. There was one that was recommended for denial, as well as one that didn't require a refund. That's typically the properties we fix between the issuing of tax bill and before the, the due date of the taxes. If there are statistic, uh, issues that can be fixed quite easily, 
mostly data corrections and things. That's what we do. So that's um, that was in the amount of $2,859.86, but again, there's no refund required on those. So just, if you have any questions, I can answer those. Is there any questions for Mr. Tinker on the, uh, the abatement recommendation? Is, is that normal? the normal number about I mean is it anything increase decrease uh, actually it's uh, it's half of last year's total actually during the five years between recycle uh, revaluations um, they, they typically reduce down to the last year this is the last year um, if you remember the first year I believe we had 144 so it does decrease this year just just 24 mostly data issues that we're correcting. A lot of it had to do with us actually doing the cyclical work that we're doing, um, actually revealed some issues that people have um, filed these abatements for, mostly are for corrections. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Mr. Denker? So moved. So do we need a motion to? Yes, sir. Do we need a motion to accept the <coughs> abatement recommendations? Is this all A, B, and C, or is this? A, 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 A and B, A and B. Sir. A and B. Yeah. So, motion by Mr. Bean. Second. Seconded or by seconded. seconded by Mr. Waddell. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, the next item is, is the yearly SOAR abatements. Yep. This is the 2016 SOAR abatements. Um, I did give you a memorandum ex, uh, indicating the rate. The rate this year is 57 cents per thousand of assessed value. The total uh, refund that's being um, presented tonight equals $97,511. Okay, are there any questions? I need a motion. Make a motion. Is that the Second. Motion by Mr. Waddell, seconded by Mr. Griffin. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Appreciate it. Yep. Very good. It. Thank good you. Good job, Ed. Okay. Have a good night. Nice. Thanks. Next we have Director Jacobs and the assistant DPW director, Hale. Good evening. Good evening. How are you today? Good. Yes. We've uh, flipped a coin and no, not really. Uh, <laughs> We're doing rock, paper, scissors. Uh, Jennifer has uh, got tonight's update for you. <laughs> I'm okay. going to be the um, poster boy. For any of you that drove by today, um, yes, we have one piece of equipment down there right now. Um, basically, today we spent the morning taking out the back fence uh, so that the trucks can have full access when they are basically getting the bridges and mats uh, unloaded from the trucks uh, over into the marsh. We also posted them with the uh, police no order parking signs, worked with PD to make sure that uh, no one is parking in them. We've actually just closed the gates um, so everybody understands that there is no parking in those lots. Um, I believe it was for the summer, or till this process was over, um, your motion. Met out there with our site contractor this morning, uh, along with uh, Mike Duby, and we actually staked the entire path that the mats will be laid uh, in lieu or in preparation for uh, the mat company that arrived this evening at about 3.30. Uh, went over there with them, uh, set the places for the mats where the bridges will be going, or temporary bridges will be going, and the first truck should be here about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. So we will be starting tomorrow morning. Uh, we are hoping that it's a two, three day, two to three day setup. So that would be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, setting up the mats in the bridges, which correspond nicely to the low tides, which will be 12, 1, and 2. Uh, respectively for the next few days which also allows for daylight and the reason I'm telling you all this <laughs> is because here tonight well, I'm hoping that maybe we can make a motion to potentially work through the weekend um, that's where the daylight hours and the tides will coincide if we wait till Monday morning so say we finish set up on Thursday we're not going to want to start digging Friday leave it Saturday Sunday and then Friday uh, Monday morning low tide is at 5 a.m. So this way they can just work through. Um, I'd love to be done by Sunday. Wouldn't that be fabulous? Um, <laughs> and keep moving. But So that was something that we talked about today once we had everybody all together. Um, so that's where we're at. That is the update. Everything is still on schedule. 
all the pieces are in play. That was sort of the one piece that came up today. Any questions from the board? Mr. Bean? No, sir. Thank you. Mr. Griffin? Um, so what do you wear when you go out there? Do you wear well? <laughs> boots or? Uh, um, I'm just curious. Mud boots. Uh, it's recommended that they go up sort of towards your knees because you will find wet spots and slosh in there. Um, I have worn three different types of boots. I'm on my third pair right now. I'm very excited about it. They fit much better. Um, once the mats are laid, it will be uh, more of an accessible path, meaning I won't be as scared walking out there. Um, I do want to remind everybody, and maybe this is the forum, that this is going to be an active construction site. Um, as exciting and neat as it may seem to some people to want to come and poke their heads in, we just ask everybody, it's it's public land, but just be respectful that it's a construction site. When we have machinery out there, we will have hard hats on. Um, that's part of how it works. Um, the path out there when there is an excavator or a dump truck going up and down the mats, they can't pull over for you. You'd have to get off the mats. I mean, you can walk it as a human. It's the machines that need the mats. Would it have been easier or harder if uh, the marsh was frozen like it is many years during this time? I think there would have been the pros and cons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the pros... It wouldn't have been impossible. It, it wouldn't have been impossible, no. And, you know, with the luck we're having, it was beautiful the last week. Now that we're going to do something, it's going to be miserable and cold and windy out there, and but so not frozen. <laughs> what do we have to do about working over the weekend? Well, the... Town code, I believe, says that we can work Monday through Sunday, but the hours are restricted. Uh, the hours on Saturday are at 9 a.m. Uh, to 5 p.m. And Fred, please correct me if I'm wrong. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Fine. Um, I'd like to work the 7, have 7 to 5, because those are going to be the daylight hours. Right. So what do you suggest, Fred? I would suggest that you uh, vote to uh, authorize them to... Uh, work from 7 to 5 over the weekend on Saturday and Sunday because this does constitute a health emergency. So do we need to do make a motion? You need to make a motion and then have a formal vote. Okay, I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second it, but I just wanted to see. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the reason you want to work, and we can just so people, all, you know, in the public knows that just not getting in there for convenience sake, I mean, it's to coincide with the tides, right? right. Coincide with tides, coincide with daylight. Um, as you saw tonight, it was still light at 7, but at 6.30, 6.15, it was dark this morning. So if a low tide's at 5 a.m., I'm in the dark. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, it's for both daylight and tide cycle. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, it, it, if you wait, then it just throws you off schedule, makes things slower. Right. It does. Yeah, just so the public understands that, that there's a reason we're doing it. It's not just, you know, right. people, there it's might be noise. It's just not convenient might be for the contractor and the mat company. Yeah. That is certainly not it. In fact, they go above and beyond so that it can happen. Right. And will it increase our cost? No, it will not. Okay, good. Thank you. Any questions, Regina? I don't. I think that it's great if you do it over the weekend. I think that we should uh, try to get to the bottom of the problem as quickly as possible. We agree. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. I'd just like to say that we people shouldn't be walking out there while you guys are working. I would not encourage it. We should, they should not be out there at all. We don't. We don't encourage it. I just. I don't want to offend anybody, but that was my. It's a. It's a safety thing, everybody. I mean, this is a construction zone. This would have been no different than when we were doing High Street in the middle of the night. You know, we asked people that were not part of the construction crew or the engineers to not be, you know, walking around the, the trenches. I mean, that's in essence what we're doing. We've had some people inquire could they, and. I'm expecting that maybe members of the Conservation Commission, maybe a budget, I, you know, some other concerned citizen, all we ask is that they coordinate with us. It, that's it. They coordinate with us. You. We'll happily, right. you know, see what we can do. Okay. And I'll I'll probably we'll escort them. I'll add to that, Mr. Chairman, that I've instructed the Public Works Department to have people available down there for protection uh, during the night hours when they're not working. And uh, if somebody does venture onto the site uh, during that period of time, the instructions are to call the police. They're not supposed to be there. It's a dangerous location. Well, we're gonna. Have, it's gonna have a. You're right. It's a dangerous situation. There shouldn't be people out there, especially if you're not night. there. Right. Yeah. 
Anything else? That is what we have. The only other thing that was on the agenda was about the the transfer of money, I think, for out of the other fund, the uh, sewer access. You do, Mr. Chairman. I would request that the board vote to remove $50,000 from the Wastewater Sewer Development Charge Fund. There's currently $114,000 in there. <clears throat> this will leave us with a total of $64,000, which is more than enough to meet this year's demands and costs. And there are there is more money coming into the fund every day. So uh, this is not going to strip it, but it is being used for the purpose for which it was created. Very good. Go I'll make that motion. I'll second. Motion and seconded. All those favor? Unanimous. There Thank you. you. Right. I have one other, just one other question, if I may. Sure. There's nothing new to report or anything. I mean, everything is, is still status the way it was. Everything I mean, is still status. And yeah. if there anything does change, you will certainly be. Right. The so the public year. knows that the, 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 the one pipe is still operating properly. And Correct. Everything's going where it's supposed to go right, right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good thing. Okay. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we'll have the approval of the February 29th, 2016 public session minutes. <laughs> I'll make that motion. A motion. Second. Second. Right. Any questions, errors, omissions? All those in favor? <coughs> you want Four, one abstention. <laughs> okay. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone for taking the time from their busy schedules and lives to vote in our annual town election last Thursday, last Tuesday. Uh, it was a big vote. Thank you for coming out. Uh, it was appreciated by all those who worked at the polls and have worked very hard to set up the election for the citizens of the community. Those is interested in applying for veterans, elderly, and blind exemptions should come to the assessor's office for the necessary required forms that must be submitted not later than April 15, 2016. Residents of the Hampton Beach Village District who wish to apply for the alternate tax rate and billing will need to file the necessary applications available at the, at the assessor's office not later than April 15th. We recommend that after review that, that the selectmen approve and sign the intergovernmental agreement with the school for the town clock. The question of the operation of the bell should be an operational concern that the selectmen can direct any and all operational requirements via a written policy. Until a written policy is approved, we recommend the bill be held from oper withheld from operation. That will allow us to do some testing and so forth, and we'll find out what annoys the school, what annoys the neighbors, and adjust accordingly. Um, Mr. Chairman, I also have uh, some information. Uh, we had a vote on House Bill Number 1198 this past week, and the purpose of that bill was to set values for telephone poles. Uh, the result of that vote, and of course it's not over with yet because it's got to go to the Senate, but it's also not over with yet because there's going to be a sliding scale of depreciation applied to it, <clears throat> would indicate that uh, we're going to lose somewhere around a million plus dollars in valuation for the town, which means everybody in town is going to have an increase in their tax bills. Um, I do note that only one of our representatives voted against this bill. so. If there's thanks to go around, I suppose, it's the legislature for passing it. We'll see what happens in the Senate. Um, we had given you uh, some information with regards to uh, the Aquarian billing and notice requirements for changing the monthly billing. I understand t Town Council's not here tonight because he is ill. Uh, I believe he has filed uh, some information with the, P the Public Utilities Commission and he's currently working on making a filing with them to appeal that decision, uh, which or the pending decision. Um, and I'll kind of mention this in passing because I think it's important since they're going to have a rate increase for this function. That up until now, between 2006 and, and this year, the water rates have increased 55.45%. That's a substantial amount of money in a very short period of time, and we're looking for another rate increase next year, which will be somewhere under 10%, they're telling us, but we're not sure because they haven't filed yet. Um, there is, from the State Department of Fire Safety, the Office of the State Fire Marshal, uh, there are a couple of things that need to be discussed. One is um, 
there is a more or less a moratorium on outside burning right now. Uh, we're, we're in the middle of a, uh, a drought period, so to speak, which is unusual for this time of the year because usually we're covered with snow this time of the year. But there is no outside burning. <coughs> the, the State Fire Marshal's Office, the Bureau of Trendway, uh, and uh, um, Amusement Safety Ride Regulations has imposed new regulations on these inflatable bouncy houses. Um, and you should talk to the fire department about this or the Department of Safety, uh, but there are certain regulations that you're going to have to uh, place in effect if, in fact, you're using one of these, and they all make common sense. Uh, so I would, I would direct you to the Office of the State Fire Marshal for information with regards to that. Um, and the, yes, the other thing I think that we, we all wanted to try to get some handle on was there seems to be a significant amount of confusion over the board's direction uh, a couple of meetings ago with regard to picking up trash at new condominiums. Um, the planning board is just in the process of, of approving a condominium on Kings Highway, and um, the, the planner had put a notation in the order uh, saying that uh, because it's a condominium and in conform conformance with your prior direction, uh, they should come to the board of selectmen to see if they can get picked up. And the planning board apparently overruled that and said, no, they will be picked up regardless. Um, it doesn't matter what the selectmen say. So uh, I'm coming back to you for direction to find out if that's exactly what you had intended so that we can sort of solve this problem. So what condominium is this? This is, um, it's an existing multifamily structure and they're converting it into two condominium buildings. Uh, it's around, it's, it's down towards the um, Winnicott Road end of the uh, of Kings Highway. And they can bring their stuff out to the, uh, to the uh, street? If you permit it, they can. It only makes sense that, as far as I'm concerned, if they've been picking up the trash there, and it's just like all the other condominiums that have that. Well, I personally feel that that should be allowed. I, I understand. Uh, my, my only concern is that we've already start, re started receiving inquiries from other condominiums in town who have been in existence for a number of years, and are, we are not picking up their trash because that's not the way it was regulated at the time uh, that they now want their trash picked up. And that's, that's going to pose a problem for us because we don't have the equipment or the manpower to do it. They all come in. We're going to be in trouble. So w what condominiums are you talking about? Uh, we have condominiums up, up, up the other end of um, Esker Road uh, who have made three of them who have made comments about uh, they want their trash picked up, and they've been con con constantly complaining about that for, for two years now. And uh, are they on the road like the other one is, right on Kings Highway where the truck They goes? are on public highways. They have private roads off the public highway, but we were picking them up, and the board ordered that to cease. There are several others that have condominium documents that we have not approached as of yet uh, that are currently being picked up by the town but shouldn't be because of the condo docks. This one doesn't have any docks as of yet, but the others do. They all have docks requiring them to have their trash picked up privately, the same as um, Dunvegan Woods and, and some of the other condominiums in town. Um, but they, were, they, they went down and picked up carts of their own and pulled them out to the road, and of course we won't leave them there if they're full. <clears throat> so we did pick them up, and we, we came back to the board, and the board said you need to have them stop that because they have a condominium requirement. Um, and we just want to know where the board wants us to be, so there's no mistake in what we're doing. Jim? Uh, along with what Brick said, you know, I was at that planning board meeting, and, and the, the feeling on the planning board was there was a lot of strong feeling that that these people have had theirs picked up all along, and it should. The, the feeling also was, and I think it's something we really have to look into, that if people are paying the same taxes as everybody else, and they can bring their out to the If the they curb. live on the road, if they live on the road it's and right there, the curb, it makes no sense not to right. pick it up. So, so I think what we need to do is develop a better, whatever we're going to do here, is if it's in the docks and it's it's... You know, I mean, we, we need a clear policy of what's happening here. This has been the policy for years that if they can pick it up on the street, they pick it up. That's always been the policy. Well, I don't think. It's, well, other than that, it's changed because it's been that way for the last 12 years I've been here. Well, the planning board put a number. 
let's take uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's take High Street for instance. There's a whole series of condominiums along High Street at the, at the lower at the lower end towards the beach, mm -hmm. and all of those have requirements for private trash collection, even though they can bring carts to the street, and that's in their docks. So if we change that, uh, we're going to add significant time and expense to our appropriation, uh, and of course those places are all over town. Uh, but they all have doc. Most all of them have documents that say they have to pick them up themselves. But don't they, a lot of those bring their recycling out? No, they don't. Yeah, they don't. They do. They're all the ones near me do. Too. They're not supposed to. Let me put it that way. It's in their condominium documents. They're not supposed to. But they've been encouraged by the board of selectmen in other years. In other in fact, years, they were given because a when, the when we were trying to get bins. recycling going, it was encouraged that people yeah. do the recycling rather than put the recycling in the trash. That's why I say what we need to do is develop some kind of a real policy here and what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Uh, and, and you know, if somebody's had theirs done all along, well, first of all, it's if it was a condominium that had a lot of bins. They can't possibly, if they, they don't have enough frontage to put them all out. And most condominiums don't want to do it. They don't want all those bins in front of them. Right. And I think it would be a very unusual. Uh, and they have to have, by the what the rules are, is how many feet those bins are supposed to be apart. You really can't do it unless it's something like a very small group of, like what we're talking about. to two tonight. feet apart, right. What? They have to be at least two feet apart, to be yeah, correct. Yeah, so you can't really do it. Uh, unless it is just a small little. Mm -hmm. we still need we still need to clearly define what's what, so the planning board knows and we know what's happening. So that the planning board's not questioning, you know, what are the selectmen, you know, putting something in a dock and or, or into a plan, and then we're taking it out. And so I, I I think we need to somehow get together and 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 plan this out and have a good policy for how we're going to do it and who's going to do it and who's has the right to have their trash and recycling picked up. Yeah, it poses a real problem because people come in and they live in a condominium and they are residents and they have a right to come in and get a, um, a cart in these situations. So they do. And then all of a sudden they're, they're being picked up by us, but their contractor is complaining because there's no trash in his dumpster. Um, it's getting to be a mixed signal and sooner or later we're going to be in trouble. Because if we start picking up all these condominiums in town that are fronting on the street where they can bring a cart out and they go get a cart, we're going to need additional men and additional equipment. We just can't do it. It's not, we're, we're tight now. Well, it's maybe it's, we have, that's what has to happen. The thing is, we, you know, we've got to give people what they're paying their taxes for. And <clears throat> I think that um, for how many condos are this, is this one that you're referring to now that's in the, the one? I believe there's eight or nine on this one. Yeah. I think and, that's the number. So, and uh, and they uh, the, obviously the planning board's already gone over the plan. They probably don't have a place to put any trash. Well, uh, I don't know. They had to they had to uh, come up with a place to put the bins when they weren't being used. And they did. Yeah, I, I don't remember the exact, but I'm giving you the general of what the discussion was. Yeah. In this case, they would have to bring the bins, bins up the in, street. And, you know, have the bins stored yeah. off off the uh, street. They're not going to leave them on the street. So they did have a place for that, yes. But the whole fact was that they were having them picked up anyways prior to this. And I think that if if they're directly facing the street, I mean, I don't see people taking um, bins from down the street and going up to another street and leaving them up there. That to me wouldn't probably wouldn't be right. But if the that, you know they're right there, and they can withstand uh, the criteria of not having the bins. You know, you could only have so many bins, right? In order <coughs> because of the square footage. But again, I'm just going to stress. I think we should have a clear-cut policy so people know what they're doing, rather than just saying this guy can and that guy can't, and we'll put the plans in this one. You know, and and, and leaving it vague and open for interpretation. We need to develop something. I think more than that, the selectmen need to be consulted before that decision's made. But you may find yourself with a 300-unit condominium that we're picking up. It doesn't, 
that can happen any time along the line, depending on where the where the carts are and where the they're left trucks up. Trucks aren't supposed to go on. Pro it's never really been a problem. It's starting to be a problem. Well, sure. now all of a sudden it's a problem. Yeah. But before it was always just they approved it and it was it worked out fine. And the people brought the bins out. You know when if it was. If, first of all, no, I've never seen anyone come and ask where it would have been unreasonable, where they would have had too many bins or, I mean, people don't want that. Would you like to have in the condominium where you live, uh, 70? You do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do? The, the, the recycling we put out, and it's not, recycling, it's not a problem. Recycling, yeah. We, we, t we take care of but our own trash. But you don't do your trash. No, and no. we put the recycling And that's pretty much what all is encouraged do. to do recycling. Right, but he, he, he's not just talking recycling. He's also talking trash. Right, shape. but that's why I'm saying, again, that's fine. Just get a, let's get a policy so everybody knows what we're doing. We need one because we're going in two directions at the same time yeah. for different reasons. Why don't and we, we put a number on it? But an arbitrary number, how can we do that? I mean... Well, we're talking, you know, first of all, I couldn't see, uh, I, I guess most of the ones that I see probably are recycling. Most condominiums. Uh, I think we need to know how many are doing it, what, what, the, what, the, uh, what the strain on the manpower is, et cetera, et cetera. I think we need to know some facts before we develop a policy. I don't think we should sit here and just come up with a policy that's a random number that we're going to, or just say anybody new now has to get theirs done a new way. May I, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Are you two done with your dialogue? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is this on the agenda somewhere? Oh, yes. it's part of his. Part of my report. Where's report. it? Where's it? What number is it? It's his report. It's the bottom one. All right. Where's that? Okay. Town manager. No, I'm board? sorry. No, I'm not. It's not. Is this there. on the agenda? No. no. It's not. Okay. It's not on the agenda. We don't have any facts. I don't know what we're talking about. Um, so we can keep on talking, but That's rock right. and roll. Um, Do I pick up the ones that the planning board have told to, to, to put their material out in the street for, for a condominium, or don't I? That's the question. Mr. Chairman, so it's, it's not on the agenda. I don't see it. Um, I think can we need some facts. Can we wait till next week when we have we can put it on the agenda? We certainly can. Um, I'm sure there's not going to be trash between now and then. And Yeah, there's people living there. We're picking trash up. Yeah. But are they condominiums now, or are they still rentals? I can't answer that. I'm not in the planning board, <laughs> right. so I don't know. Right. I don't know whether right. they filed they've, that they've document been, or not. They've been picking them up before, but yeah. what do we need to do to, at this point in time to make sure that we're sending not mixed messages? My concern is that we have a number of other condominiums in town that are directly fronting on the street that currently take care of their own trash. And they pay very high prices for it, as, as, as Rick knows. Okay, if all of a sudden we end up picking up hundreds of additional <coughs> barrels because they they come down and ask for them, then we're going to have a problem, and I, I can't solve that problem overnight. I just don't think that's happening now. So, so if we say that our policy has not changed, if they're currently not being picked up, they shouldn't be picked up. That's that's kind of where I want to go at this point. I don't want to encourage a stampede. Is what I don't want to do. Because I think that will cause a lot of problems. Until we can address this yeah, problem Yeah, you need to have better. a policy. So we I recommend that it's on the agenda for next week. No problem. And then we come up with some some specifics so we can talk in specifics and not just chit-chat between Rick and I. That would be lovely. And can we get a DPW chop on this as well, Mr. Oh, yeah. Chairman? Thank you. Yes, because yeah. it would be well, nice. The other ones are, who are hauling the trash. Well, they, they spoke about the concerns last time when they were in about the costs. So I think they it'd did. Be good, good they did. to have them. Yep. Okay. We just I just want to say one more thing though. About the cost, we still have people coming in and there's uh, tax revenue coming in. So if this is a ploy to hire new employees, I mean why don't we just put that out there? Because that's what it sounds like it is for me. No, I don't want to do that because first um, of all I can't. Okay? Mm -hmm. When we reach our maximum absorption and we, we, we actually fill the schedule for the entire day for each day of the week, and there's still some significant trash to pick up, then these people are going to go on overtime and come in on the weekend to pick it up. It's the only way it's going to get done. And, of course, when we get into the summer, potentially that gets to be a bigger problem. So what I want to do is I want to head off a problem before it gets here so that we have a clear understanding of what we're doing and why we're doing it so that we, when people come in and say, 
uh, I'm a resident, I live here, I want a car. That's how we started with these streets up uh, off Esker Road, and we ended up with 20 or 30 extra carts out there on the side of the road, and we started picking them up and found out they had condominium requirements for them to take care of their own trash, and their complaint is, I pay taxes, you have to take it. It sounds to me like they made a mistake to give them the carts. Well, if they weren't in condiment, I mean, I don't disagree. You just can't give them out to anybody. That's where the where the barn, the horse got out of the barn. Well, right. that's where it yeah. happened. So I think I think this so. never happened before. This is the first time this has happened. <clears throat> so I think what we need to do now is, before any carts are given out, we've instituted a system where they come in and sign up for the cart. Uh, if it's on the weekend, they have to sign a sheet. We'll deliver it. <laughs> So it goes out on Monday after we check on whose it is and whether or not there's a problem with that particular condominium. So that we, we don't try to get into that situation. And before we had part-time people working and they came in, their instructions were, if they're a resident, you gotta give them a card if they demand one. And that, that's what was happening. And that and was a mistake. That. that was a mistake. Well, we've, we've corrected that. So right now we do have a policy, correct? Yes. On, on this? Yep. So until next week, that policy is still in effect? Yep. So, Absolutely. and we will have something next week that we can. We'll have Public Works work up some figures for you. Okay. Anything else in your report? No, that's fine. Have any questions for the town manager? I do. Yes, sir. You had talked about uh, uh, our legislative delegation. I did. Uh, yeah. Can you rehash that again? Because uh, um, I think that speaks uh, volumes to uh, uh, our representation, our warning uh, to the citizens of Hampton on issues that involve taxation. So I'd, I'd like to hear that again, uh, right. and I would like uh, our legislators to come down and uh, explain themselves to us on how we can be taxed excessively in favor of utilities. And then I would like to dovetail and segue immediately into the um, 400 million that was um, uh, lightened on the tax by Next Terra. So if you could uh, take the floor again, Mr. Welch. I won't do the 400 million, but that's true. We, we were lightened I'll, somewhat. I will yes. ask you about your expertise in that in a minute. Um, Thank you. Uh, the House voted this past week on House Bill 1198 on a roll call. Uh, I did acquire a copy of the roll call, so I, I did make sure who voted for what. Uh, Mr. Cushing was the only member of our delegation that voted against this bill. The net effect of the bill is that we are going to lose at least a million dollars worth of taxable value in the town. And who, the town of Hampton? The town, just the town of Hampton. Okay. And while you're talking, I'm just going to ask you some questions. Is anybody from the delegation uh, advised you or warned you? No. Has anybody from the delegation advised or warned any member of the board? I'm, I'm going to let me speak to that. If it's okay, cool. That. But I, I, yeah, I'm yep. going to keep the floor. Go ahead. Speak to that. I, I think I think there's two guilty parties here, and I think we're partially guilty. I don't think we've paid enough attention to what's going on up there, and I know sometimes it's frustrating to go up there and to testify and not get any place. But I think that that some of us should have gone up and testified on this bill. We should have talked before the committee on it. And I know there's a lot of, they bring up a lot of lobbyists and everything, and I'm not defending anybody, but I think, and I think it would have been to our advantage to have invited the state reps in here before the legislative uh, process to go through things, which, which so I think, I think we, we're guilty of not voicing our opinion enough and not being up there. And I know, Phil, that you voice your opinion all the time on this, but uh, I think we have to take some of the blame. And okay, I, I, can I get it back and we come back sure. to you for your, your moments? And uh, we're not legislators, we're selectmen. And this is their bills, and it's their duty to represent us and to inform us. That's how I look at it. Uh, and others may look at it differently. It's going to cost the town a million dollars? No, it's going to cost us a million dollars worth of valuation okay. times the tax and, rate. And the tax rate, so what is that in ballpark figures? $19 uh, per thousand. Okay, so what does that come out to? Yeah. 20 points, yeah. 200 grand? Yeah. Okay, well, I'd like to hear from our legislators on why we're not warned and why no, we're not asked what we think. Uh, was the tax assessor uh, asked anything about this? No. Okay, was the budget committee asked anything about the this? Tax assessors did uh, represent the cities and towns in front of the committee okay. and asked them not to vote it. Okay. And um, the original bill was changed. They had dropped the cost of a telephone pole from uh, 50 to 30, and then they brought it back to 40. Um, the, there's a problem here, and it is, it's, it's very discreet in the bill, because what happens is over a relatively short period of time, they're going to amortize these telephone poles, 
poles that last 100 years now are being amortized over 30 years or 40 years. And uh, it's accelerated amortization, uh, it's accelerated depreciation. And um, I think the assessor said to me this morning that uh, we're talking now about a, a pole that might be worth $500, and in 10 years it's going to be worth $10. That's the kind of depreciation we're talking. It's going to be worth virtually nothing. And that, that also applies to uh, conduits in the ground because they've included those. Now, they haven't gotten to the depreciation portion of this yet. That's something that's coming up later on, and it's going to be administratively done. Uh, and that's a problem because we don't know what they're going to do because it's not going to be in the legislature. To give you a, uh, an example, uh, we currently have 157 sole-owned poles in town at $600 a pole. Um, the new value is going to be $300, and that's going to be depreciated over a relatively short period of time. May, may, may I just ask a question on the $600? Yeah. Are we getting that now, or is that in a court case? That's what the valuation is. Okay, but are there everything's fighting, in a court case. Everything's in a court case. Yeah. So right now, it's not money that we're actually we're, we're losing value, but not the the money actually because we're not getting the money right now are we they have settled some of the cases they have not settled others yeah okay well so, I, mean, I, I would say this on the on this issue because we're looking at uh next hour and this is again my my floor time with the town manager's report is um we've looked at uh the issue and we just had a a, uh, a warrant that specifically addressed uh um assessing utility uh mm -hmm. in the secret next hour is that correct yeah Okay. And there, there is a state law that dictates that, but we are saying we're going to assess that, and that is our intent. Is that correct? Our intent is to, because we just passed a warrant article. Okay. And there is a state law that governs that, and we take a utility commission's or the state's recommendation on that on that value, and that's the one that is used. Is it's, that correct? No, we do not. We, we actually value the property. Oh, the, the tunnels? Do. Yeah, we actually value them, but it's, it's, a, it's at a, a decreased rate because... The way the system works, it's about as corrupt as you can get, I think. What happens here is each utility is required annually to fill out a report, which goes to each city and town for their property located in the town. And they have the privilege under state law of assigning what the value of that is. If we differ with that value, we have to hire an expert to prove the difference. If not, we have to accept their value or be subject to court action. Okay, and we have done that with that warrant, is that correct? We have started that process to value all of these properties because okay. the Constitution says we have to every five years. Okay, and it would be my, my intent based on this because we, we can't stand this kind of representation uh, where we lose $200,000 a year. We're trying to run a town here, and big business interests are, are working the legislative process in Concord without warning the public without warning the representatives from the small local governments. That is our representative's job to do that for us. That's why we elect them. Mr. Cushing is, is doing that on this issue. He and voted I'm, yes. And I'm confident that Mr. Edgar would, would, would have done the same thing and will do the same thing. And that's the standard we expect of our legislative delegation. We try and get people pay raises. We try and keep the tax rate low. And people in Concord wearing orange badges, gathering around the flagpole, and taking $200,000 out of this tax bill. We're addressing the Seabrook issue, and it will be my intent, however these people that hang around the flagpole, no pun intended in Concord, that we do the same thing next year. And we assess this, and if necessary, we will institute a tort action to change that. And we're just not going to take people taking $200,000 and rigging their own assessment values, hanging around the flagpole, and not informing us. I find that unconstitutional. I find it un-American. I find it a sordid business practice. And it, it riles me. And then finally, this legislative bulletin, as informative as it is, comes down to us. This is dated 11 March. Yep. And they're telling us about history. Is that correct? This is, okay. These are things that have all happened. And to speak to Jim's point, um, where we need to share some responsibility for this, is we need to, and as you know, I had a hat in the ring in this last delegation. It was one of my intents, uh, and we'll do it now uh, from, from this view, is to make sure that we get reports or some system where legislation that is coming down that affects Hampton goes not only to the Board of Selectmen, but to department heads, if it's a law enforcement issue, a fire issue, an assessing issue, that we're warned. Otherwise, we don't need these legislators up there. 
they serve us no value, they cost us money. We just don't need them. They can go vote on whatever they want to, for their, their, their party interests, but the Hampton interests are being ignored by this delegation. And I'd like to have them down here in the spirit of cooperation to, to, in a technology-based society where we and our department heads and our citizens can act in our own self-interest. Because right now, they're, they're hoarding the information, they're, they're, they're adhering to special interests, and it's costing us hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I appreciate you bringing it up. Thank you. I will tell you that we all belong to the various associations, and those associations do track all this legislation, and we do have representatives that go and testify on all these bills, but we're always outvoted. Oh, we, we need a, 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 again. We need to be forewarned, and, and then I've said my piece, and I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, no, no, we need to be forewarned. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I just just quickly, I just want to go. I mean, NHMA does send us bulletins yeah. prior to things coming up. I mean, yeah. they do send us history, but they do send us prior to coming up. The House Journal is is uh, in calendar is produced. It is online. We can look at it. We know what the the uh, hearings coming up are, and we should be attending more. And the other thing I'm just going to say is, um, I don't think we can really say that our delegation is ignoring us. I, I, I think that Senator Stiles does more for Hampton than any senator up there does for their district. I mean, she is she, she is constantly contacting Rusty, myself, contacting people, saying this hearing's coming up, that hearing's coming up, yeah. are you sending somebody up, are you getting up here? She's constantly discussing what's going on in the town, what the town needs, what kind of, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna disagree 100% on that one with you, Phil. But uh, representatives, the problem is that people might see it differently, but I agree that we need more for Hampton, but I agree also with what the town manager had just said, that you've got to go up there and work the system, which you might not want to work the system, but you've got to because there's 400 legislative representatives. <clears throat> and what we need to do, and what we've done in the past, has always been the department heads have gone up there, and the town lawyer, and the town manager, or whatever. Though, you know, we need to have representation. There's, that's how it's always been done all the other years I've been here. Um, and it's always been good, and there's, sometimes there's been Usually there's been a selectman that can go or can, uh, but the department heads should have full, dis you know, those legislatures should have our department's heads to be there when they need them. And we do send them. And, you know, so that should always be. One thing I can say, and that is that, uh, and I know this has happened the last two years, I paid particular attention to it. If any one of you call a particular committee with someone on that committee, whether they're your representative or your senator or not, and voice concern about a bill that's being passed, usually the bill doesn't get passed. They want to hear from the selectmen. They don't want to hear from us as appointed officials. They want to hear from the elected officials. No, up and, and up there, up call, and up they there, kill those bills. up and up at hearings where um, you you are you do testify, and it's uh, it's a it's a rigged game, and it's fifteen zip, and it's ways and means, and you get smoked. And you've been there with me. Oh yeah. Smoked a few myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, do we have any more? Uh, I have another question about the town manager's report, although it's sure. not right listed here, but I think you said it was about the Aquarian. Didn't, didn't you say something about it? Um, yes, I did. Yeah. Yep. And um, do you want to repeat that again? I believe my comment was um, they're they're currently filing to change their billing cycles. And that's going to represent a $23,000 rate increase. Um, we don't know quite what that rate increase means at this point, but some of the documents that I read today that were sent to us through town council indicated that that may be an annual rate increase to pay for monthly billing. And they've already received since 2006, uh, which is the last 10 years, 55.4% rate increase. And they'll be in for another rate increase next year, somewhere slightly under 10 percent. We were told. Right. And this is something we've we constantly have this issue with them. They constantly are. Uh, it doesn't seem to do any good. Although I think we do have to continue to um, complain. We do. Um, I just read where um, and saw a thing on TV actually about it that uh, the Macquarie Group that owns Aquarian Water, yep. they are buying up businesses like Aquarian. Hand over fist, they just bought two very, high, I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, they have, they're making all kinds of money, and yet we're being abused. 
by an Australian company here at our own water company. Uh, I think it's terrible, and I think that we should be getting more response from the commission that regulates this. We're not even allowed to testify in front of them. Both Mr. Bean and I went up there with the purpose of testifying. They would not let him talk because he was a selectman. Yeah, it's it, was, it was just outrageous. The, the Public Utilities Commission is just that. It's the commission for the public utilities. It's not the, not the commission for the citizens. They are there just to rubber stamp what goes on, and, and that's exactly what they're doing. Well, I think we should continue to protest to our, as much as we can. That's what we're doing. We, we're raising as much cane as we possibly can <laughs> within the limits of the law. Else, <laughs> Jenny, you going to tell manager's report? I'm all set, thank you. Okay, Jim, I'm set now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, old business. We have the intergovernmental agreement. Oh, oh that, oh. that's go, go, go. I, didn't, I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for the school of the clock, you, you mentioned that in your previous report. I did, sir. Um, I did happen to talk to the uh, People that are on the committee, yep. and they are more than happy to work with us. To come up with a policy on the belt. I thought they would. Be. So uh, they were very happy to hear that this was going to be done, and and uh, they were very excited about coming forward and working with it. As they said, once once people start to hear it, they're going to see it was so much different from before. Yeah. So, yeah. so do we? You would need a formal vote, sir, to accept the agreement and to execute it, and then send it over to the school department for their approval and execution. So do I have a motion to accept the intergovernmental agreement? I'll make that motion. I'll second, but now we're going to... When's the written policy coming? That's something that we're going to have to get together with, okay. the, with the committee to okay. do on your behalf All right. so that we can get something accomplished. Okay. So we're quite a ways away from actually putting the... This just, the in. this just gets the agreement so they can start okay. yeah. with, with what they need to do to, to get the bill in going. Good. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Any other old business? This I probably should have mentioned at announcement see community calendar, but I just wanted to mention about uh, that the Historical Society got uh, an award and recognition from um, the um, DAR, uh, the Ranger Group from Portsmouth. Oh. And it was really nice. I attended it yesterday, and there were two kids from Hampton that were very impressive. Um, they wrote, Thank you, um, you know, they presented something that they wrote, and uh, it was very interesting, and the ladies were really nice, and it was a wonderful thing, and Candy Stelmack uh, accepted the reward award, and she works really hard there, and she continues to do a good job, so it was a great thing for Hampton. That's great. Thank you. Phil's gonna sign those. Thank you. Uh, any other old business? Moving on to new business. Election results discussion. Is that something you put? I didn't put on. I asked for it. Okay. <laughs> Rick did. Uh, it's something that we traditionally do right. is discuss what's happened, you know, uh, with the uh, results. I personally would like to say something about um, one of the things I noticed and I, it failed um, majorly was the $2 million uh, wastewater uh, treatment center article that had the four parts. I think that a, a mistake was made to do that, um, particularly to put the um, waste, the wash down. I mean, it has been voted down over and over and over again, and I think we're only asking for trouble to put things like that in addition, in, include it in something where we needed the other three parts of it. I think it was a major mistake, and I think it's something that we should learn from. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I want to extend on that. I agree with Rick on that. I was disappointed to see that didn't pass, and I think having that $2 million I know it wasn't asked to be broken down into different pieces, but I think maybe if it had been, it would have been, I mean, I was at the deliberative session, but as we know, not too many people were. So it would have been easier for people to actually see what was going on. I think they saw the $2 million, and I know I've had a lot of people come up to me and, you know, 
DPW is just looking for more money. Well, no, that's not really the case. And I mean, now look at what we're dealing with right now. So. Okay. Jim. Um, no, nothing. Cool. Yeah, we we uh, we came into compliance with Gatsby this year, uh, which shows that we have a two million dollar a year depreciation expense. Uh, there's a reason there's a uh, a request to do that by uh, the Government Accounting Standings Boards. It's so you can uh, gauge uh, the numeric value of something, and that something is the depreciation of your infrastructure. And if we are depreciating according to standards this year at our audit, and the auditors would tell us two million dollars. The expense of our government is actually 10% more than what we negotiate and what we, we vote ourselves in every year. And if we constantly neglect that issue, and nobody wants to spend money and nobody wants to raise taxes, but we don't want the beach shut down. And we don't want pipes to burst with um, um, uh, effluent. And we want to speak to what Rick is speaking about, public works. And so $2 million a year on top of our $26 million, $27 million is the real cost of doing this government. And how much do you want to invest wisely on your own behalf on infrastructure that's critical to this, this town? And uh, how much do you want to um, delay until it becomes a crisis, until we have to hear what we heard today? And so it uh, requires a, a new set of eyes and how we look at this. Uh, Gatsby is there for a reason, and it's a management tool, it's a leadership tool, and it's a department head tool. And Mr. Welch and his department heads are doing great to use that as a tool. And we incorporate this, this effluent issue along with what's under uh, Lafayette Road. Uh, we should have contingencies for what other um, assets are depreciating in a crisis state. And uh, we're getting there, and we're inching there. And uh, the former chairman tonight makes a, a great point about it. And the voters do vote, and when we inform them better and we get these metrics, they're there for a reason. And uh, we do that without rancor, without hostility, without divisiveness, but the free flow of information. And I think we're, we're getting there. I was very, very pleased overall on that ballot uh, for, for what the town accomplished uh, through the budget process, through the budget, budget committee, uh, their votes. Uh, through the selectmen and the voters uh, in the great majority neglected outside uh, anonymous shadow government publications and went with budget committee uh, elected officials and went with uh, uh, governing body elected officials. And I was very proud of the town and, and how it came out, notwithstanding um, individual races uh, or um, what Rick speaks about. Thank you. I would like to uh, have a conversation here um, and see what everyone thinks. Why did the Teamsters not? pass I couldn't tell you why I I, 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 I think I, we need to look at that well uh, we, we can do that obviously we're gonna have to look at that because we're gonna have to renegotiate with them right uh, but uh, the, the voters spoke and that that was one that, that surprised me I I agree with you Rick that we maybe not should have not put those four or five things in on that two million dollar bond article However, I'll disagree with you with the, the wash down station. First of all, at any point in time, the EPA can come down and fine us on that, which they've already told us they can. And two, as, as to Mr. Bean, uh, we've got to protect our infrastructure. And part of our infrastructure is our vehicles. And if we're not washing them down properly and we're not rinsing them off properly and the salt is eating them away, we're having a tendency to, to eat those vehicles up quicker. So. Uh, I, I think uh, we just need to do a better job at informing the, the voters about that. But all in all, I agree with you. I think uh, the voters spoke. They spoke well. Uh, they they passed a lot of stuff in this town that I think they saw last year. They, they, they voted on uh, paving and stuff, and they saw that it got done. So they, they if you want to say, rewarded us again this year by voting for the one this year to hopefully see that their, their roads will get paved again this year. I think that was one of the things that passed that was was very good. So the problem is though that the washdown article has been put in there over and over again. It doesn't even come close. And we can't be trying to do something like what they do in Washington that the whole country's upset about. Uh, and that's where I think the mistake was made here. I, I didn't disagree with you on that. Yeah. I think I think he still has oh. to sign those. Thanks. Um, so anything else on the new business? I'm set. Closing comments. Welcome aboard, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other closing comments? Uh, welcome to Regina. Yes. She's part of the board. It's going to be an exciting time, I'm sure. Yeah, welcome to Regina. And I think we got a new year here, and I think we've got a lot to do, and I think we got to make sure that we just stay on the ball and keep it going, keep it rolling, keep the interest of the town, the voters, the taxpayers, and uh, clear and tra uh, transparent in what we do. Yep, very good. Anything else? Motion to adjourn at 2021. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. No.